There are many ways to perform subcision. However, um, the original paper by Orenteich in 1995 shows this particular method. It's called the wiper method using a single entry point. So subcision nowadays um, can be used using various different techniques and various different needles. Uh, subcision itself stands for subcutaneous incisionless surgery. So once again, various different types. Um, I can start off usually with a 21, but in this case, I'm just demonstrating um, fibrotic scars and how it can actually bend even uh, 23 gauge needles. So we start off with a 21 normally. That's why you see in my notes, um, it's a uh, 21 gauge by default, sometimes a 23. I'm now using a 21 gauge um, needle. Uh, even 18 gauge needles have been uh, reported by uh, Australian dermatologists. Uh, however, the technique is uh, always the same. Basically, it's the wiper technique. So the angle of attack is the same, the same result of bending 23s and 21s. So now I'm using what's known as a no-core. A no-core needle, as you know, is used for head transplantation. It contains a blade, and I use this to break down fibrotic scars. So if there's a significant amount of fibrosis, um, I do use uh, a no-core. However, um, I've been using this for the last probably about six years. However, uh, in the last three years, I've been using more cannula lipo techniques, which once again, um, is a novel technique which has only been reported in the literature um, as of this year. Uh, so that's why I've been in my notes. I've actually been writing down uh, what's widely accepted by the community, uh, namely my peers, which is basically the uh, first method reported in 1995. So it's a good release of tethered scars here using a uh, no-core needle. The downside about the no-core, as everyone knows who's used no-core, is that there's a higher incidence of um, fibrosis and encapsulation with hematomas and seromas. So um, yeah, it's very important. So you can compare the needle sizes and the end result and you can see that the no-core is not bent. So I use a no-core in various different methods. So in this situation, I'm putting it in a syringe. The only reason I'm putting it in a syringe is actually uh, I can uh, go in deeper uh, with the no-core needle and not lose my orientation because I make a little nick at 12 o'clock where the blade is. Um, the other fact is that I can actually put um, saline in the... Um, in the um, syringe itself. I do not. I, I did use to use PRP. I did not find that PRP had any advantage over saline. I never ever use hyaluronic acid fillers with no core. The reason being is that if I have a hematoma, uh, there's marked overcorrection. So here I am doing a single entry no core multi-level method um, for um, subcision. This is why um, I do regional nerve blocks because uh, if it's a extensive as this, um, seriously, it is, uh, for patient comfort, it's um, very important. So this is a three entry level method. So I, sometimes I go for three entries depending on the extent of um, the, um, the scars. So you can see it's multi-level three entry method uh, and subsizing at the same time using both a lipo method as well as uh, the traditional wiper method. So the orientation of the blade I can um, also adjust using um, a needle holder. So this allows me to actually um, uh, go in deeper. So you can see I can go in deeper uh, with the no core. Uh, the downside about this is that I don't have as great of a feel. I, I like to actually feel my needle to know uh, what resistance I'm having. Uh, and once again, with this method, the more extensive uh, you perform the no-core, uh, the more extensive the uh, bruising, and uh, once again, uh, the hematoma rate. Uh, so at this moment in time, I'm actually doing an audit. Um, I've got about a 7% hematoma rate with no-core. So um, no-core freehand technique. So if I'm using, um, for example, delicate scars in, in uh, surface um, scarring uh, just below the dermis. I like to actually use uh, my free hand because I can feel it a lot better compared to a needle holder. And I use an index for finger forward as an orientation of the blade is stabilized. So this is how I perform um, no-core 
uh, itself. And I'll show you a few other variations of how I perform um, no core to the, um, to the cheeks. Uh, so once again, um, this is a combination lipo and wiper technique uh, with the 18 gauge no core, much like what was first described with uh, the original 1995 paper. However, uh, we're now using a needle uh, rather than a uh, hypodermic um, uh, needle. We're actually using a blade, sorry. So this is multi-level subsision. So I'm going in different depths. I do believe that they're attachment at different depths and you can actually feel if, it's, it's, if it releases, then I'll go down to um, a, a deeper depth, obviously being very careful with the anatomy, uh, regional anatomy. And this is why I think it's important to actually perform um, blocks because of the fact that I'm much more accurate um, if there is um, very little in the way of tumescent anesthesia in that area. Uh, and yes, tumescent anesthesia can help uh, with safety, but I find it more accurate if I do a regional block of the entire area and perform subcision um, with, um, with, my, with my technique. So this is called point entry. So um, I use point entry uh, if the tethered scars are well defined. So if you can see the tethering, I go for point entry rather than actually single point. The reason being if I do point entry, there's less chances of hematoma. So each of these points are subsized and I move on to the next area. Uh, so you can see me just moving on to the next area rather than actually uh, subsizing using uh, you know, one or two or even three points. I'm, I'm subsizing seven or eight um, different, different scars. And once again, this is why a regional block is important because it's for patient comfort levels. Uh, and like I said, if the scars are uh, discrete this is how I actually subsize using what's known as, I call it, point entry. Okay, so uh, bruising is very common and once again hematomas as well um, for no call. So this is why over the last three years I've been using cannula subcision. Um, I think a lot of dermatologists who have been using Subcision find that cannula subcision is, is probably better than no core and it's been confirmed by recent papers uh, actually this year. So I'm about to do my papers in regards to um, the incidence of side effects uh, for me uh, in regards to cannula subcision and it is about seven times less uh, chances of uh, hematoma together with um, uh, seroma formation with, um, with this. So with cannula subcision, you can add anything to the um, syringe. Uh, in fact, most of the time I use saline uh, because most of the scars are uh, attached. So I use what's called um, multi-level cannula subcision. Uh, I coined that term. So once again, I can't write these down in my notes because they're not, I guess, accepted by my peers. Um, the Literature isn't great for it. However, the 1995 paper, like I said, is, is the paper to go to, and hence that's why um, I um, annotate my minimum um, standards rather than my novel techniques. Uh, so once again, this is cannula subcision, and I find this a much safer technique. Um, it's not filling, I'm not dermal filling here with a, with a filler. You can see I'm actually breaking the bonds down. Uh, so I'm pinching and you can see the bonds as, as I'm breaking up the scar tissue. You can actually see the tethering and then the release shortly. Um, and I hold that down and I break it down. So I use different types of cannulas. My standard go-to cannula nowadays is a 22 uh, gauge TSK cannula. The reason being is that they are very stiff, um, they have good Japanese metal, uh, and I use everything from um, 23 gauge, uh, 25, and in really fibrotic scars, especially around the jawline area, I use 18 gauge um, cannulas. And once again, I perform a regional block around that area, but I also have um, some tumescent anesthesia in that area as well because sometimes with this procedure it is so painful I go beyond the actual regional nerve block area and hence when I have 20% um, or all the way up to 50% uh, plain lidocaine together with um, saline 
I can um, perform this procedure with relative comfort to the patient. Uh, so once again, you can see just breaking down the scars. Um, and I find this is a much safer technique because it's a blunt cannula compared to uh, using the no core. So you can see where all the dermal grafts were performed before, and I'm breaking it down. Um, most of these patients you can see are ethnic skin types. They have a certain type of uh, scarring, which is usually worse. However, in my opinion, in my opinion only, they do uh, extremely well with um, with um, uh, manual scar revision techniques such as um, subcision because I am breaking down the bonds. Certainly microneedling works well but if, if you uh, logically I'm attacking the bonds from a um, you know f underneath from a horizontal angle compared to a vertical angle. So this is ethnic skin type 3. I prefer manual subcision like I said compared to lasers and energy devices. Uh, for this type of scarring, obviously, um, with different types of scarring, I do use my lasers and energy devices as well. So this is just after two sessions, and you can see I haven't injected anything there. So that's not swelling, um, that's subcision itself. The other subcision techniques, so you can see, uh, the, once again, this is not filling, this is not cosmetic filling, this is subcision. If, if I fill, you get what's known as a donut effect. If you get fibrosis around that area and you fill, Basically, uh, the filler will go to the area of least resistance, which surrounds the entire scar. This, in this situation, is IM filling. It's called foundation filling. Uh, I call it foundation filling because I'm actually laying down the foundations and pushing the scars from underneath. So the atrophic scars, I'm mean, lifting the entire area. Obviously, I'm in the right plane. Uh, I'm on periosteum in this area, uh, being very careful to feel the temporal artery and not hit that. And once again, super, superficial subcision filling technique. Um, I break up the scars first uh, using a 30 gauge needle. And in this situation, the injection of uh, filler is minuscule. You're looking at uh, less than 0 0.02 mil per scar. In this situation, I'm tunneling. So I call this my tunneling subcision technique. Uh, so I, I, um, I'm feeling around to see which bonds are actually atrophic because of pure atrophy or whether there is tethering and if there's no tethering he's got atrophic scars and um, I do uh, use a filler. Uh, if the scars are fibrotic, in other words if the subdermal fibrosis or fibrosis for that area, you cannot actually just put a filler in because you get the donut effect once again. So in this situation I tunnel um, back and forth, back and forth, breaking up the scars with, sub with subcision and then use um, uh, filler for volume replacement. This is just pure subcision, um, just on the scar and the forehead, just using a 25 gauge needle, um, and it works very well. So look, the minimum subcision technique I perform is in the original windscreen wiper technique from 1995. However, other techniques that I have shown may not be known by my peers. Um, the new papers are coming out. I've been doing this for years. Um, and hence, that's why if I were to record all of this down in my, um, I guess in my notes, uh, and I was audited, which I am, um, a lot of people will not follow what I do. Um, so I hope that explains why um, I write down the minimum of what I do. However, in the majority of cases, you can see why I need regional nerve blocks and the extent of subcision um, I do in my patients. Thanks for that.